Welcome to Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hello and welcome to Talking Hope. I'm Darren Godden, and I'm pleased to be speaking today with Dr. Jennifer Sang, the Medical Director of Breast Surgery for City of Hope, Orange County, and a key clinical leader for City of Hope's Advanced Cancer Campus in Irvine, California. Dr. Sang is a renowned breast surgeon and, res and researcher who is beloved by her patients who trust her with their lives. She was recently honored by the Orange County Business Journal with a Women in Business Award for her, her significant contributions to City of Hope and the Orange County community. And she is the principal investigator on a groundbreaking new clinical trial, the first multi-center trial in the United States for robotic mastectomies. Welcome to Talking Hope, Dr. Singh. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. Very happy to be here with you, Darren. And congratulations on the award. Uh, it was a tremendous honor, I'm sure, for you. But we were so proud when we heard that you were um, nominated to that and then also uh, received one of the top awards from oh. Orange County Business Journal. Such a wonderful uh, honor. Oh, thank you. It's a team effort. Everyone behind me at City of Hope Orange County, including you. Thank you. <laughs> well, can you tell me more about this new trial and um, what is the problem at hand and what is City of Hope trying to solve with mm -hmm. opening this trial? Yeah, so uh, for early breast cancer patients, uh, they often have to think about um, having surgery, which is usually a mastectomy if we're talking about removal of the whole breast. And so our traditional technique is to use an open surgical scar, a four inch scar, somewhere around the front of the breast. And when we do that, uh, we're able to remove the breast and save potentially the skin and the nipple for a plastic and reconstructive um, implant or autonomy tissue uh, reconstruction. And this is a lovely outcome for them in the long run. Why we are opening this robotic clinical trial is it has the potential of improving post-operative and cosmetic outcomes. Firstly, it's through a minimally invasive technique. So we know that minimally invasive surgery can improve uh, recovery time and decrease post-operative pain. Secondly, we actually use an incision on the side of the breast instead of the front of the breast, a one inch scar as opposed to a four inch scar. And when the uh, patient's arm is down, you can't even see the scar at all. And why that's beneficial is not only the scar size and placement, when we do a scar uh, on the side of the breast, it actually improves skin and nipple areolar complex preservation after surgery too, which is very important for post-operative outcomes. Wow, that's... um. It sounds like it will have a tremendous impact on the the patient, but also on their their mental health and how they view themselves and everything as well. Yeah, um, so um, you've opened the first clinical trial for robotic single port mastectomies for breast cancer patients. Um, tell me exactly what what is that? So we're using the single port, which is a one port robotic device where the surgeon actually controls all the instrumentation at all times. And what we're doing is using these, this platform to use the small scar on the side of the chest wall to be able to take out the whole breast. Wow, tremendous. Um, who is this trial really directed toward and who will, who will it benefit? Yeah, so we're hoping that patients with early breast cancer will be interested in this trial. Um, those who would be eligible for nipple sparing mastectomies to begin with, who are interested in uh, potentially exploring beyond the open technique, how robotic surgery may advance the field of breast cancer care. And why should patients consider participating in this trial if they were um, either interested or if their doctor offered the trial to them, why should they consider it? Yeah, so this is someone who may be very engaged in thinking about how we advance technique. And so the usual way that we would do the surgery is through open surgery. So this is the way that they potentially can have robotic surgery, which is considered the next frontier of surgery. It's being commonly performed in Europe and Asia, and we're hoping to offer it with this trial to the U.S. population and our population at City of Hope. And City of Hope is really a pioneer in in, in robotic surgery, right? Um, I, I think the number is somewhere around 16,000 robotic surgeries we've done. Is that correct? 
Yes, that's a great point to emphasize too. It's not that robotic surgery is new. It's that we're using the device, the robot, um, newly for breast surgery. Um, but it's very commonly used in cancer surgery in different parts of the body to remove um, areas in the head, neck, abdomen, uh, pelvis, very commonly in the U.S. already. And Dr. saying, at, at what point after being diagnosed with breast cancer uh, would a patient have the option for this trial? Mm -hmm. uh, we welcome you to call us and contact us um, potentially for an evaluation to be seen as one of our patients. As soon as you're diagnosed, it's worth a conversation to see whether this is a trial that you're eligible for. And how did you get involved in this or how did you hear about this new procedure? Yeah, so I was very fortunate. I had a colleague who invited me to see him perform this procedure in Milan back in 2018. And um, he has really helped pioneer um, the use of the robot in the European population. And we know this is really taking off in Asia as well. And so I was very passionate to be able to help bring it here to the U.S. because I do see it as a tremendous advancement for patients with breast cancer. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm excited about the trial and I know that uh, you are as well and so is the entire team at City of Hope um, because it really will make a difference for our Absolutely. patients. So um, you're the first in the US to open the trial mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering why have, why have no other providers uh, opened a trial similar to this or even heard about it? Uh, so this is the full first multi-center um, clinical trial for robotic mastectomy, and it's being done in this way so that we can actually enroll patients from diverse populations, diverse locations with diverse backgrounds as well, because the hope is that we'll demonstrate that this is widely applicable and will actually increase the ability for us to offer this operation, which is technically challenging for an, from an open perspective to a greater number of women um, who, when we can use the robotic device. Wow. Um, so City of Hope is conducting more than 800 clinical trials a year, um, and which is more than anyone else on the West Coast, right? So um, tremendous that we're adding this to it as well. Um, you, you talked about diversity. Um, can, you, can you maybe talk about why, why, why diversity in clinical trials is so important? Yeah, so um, we know that not one same person walks through the door every day when we see um, patients with, with cancer, and in particular breast cancer. Um, cancer care these days is very individualized. It's very influenced by background, genetics, family history, treatment preferences as well. So we hope that a diverse population can enroll in clinical trials so that we know that the results are broadly applicable to everyone walking through the door. And what are the implications of this trial? Like really, what could it mean for the future of breast cancer? Yeah, I think this is trial is a game changer. We've uh, This could be our generation's advancement in breast cancer care. Um, it really shows tremendous promise to be able to improve a technique that really is offered in limited basis at only certain centers across the U.S. So we hope that the robotic platform is something that we can help pioneer to see uh, that more women are offered the care that they need. Well, that's a powerful statement you just said. This will be a game changer, mm -hmm. and this really, really will be the the thing that might be the legacy left behind by this generation of the change in the way that we're treating breast cancer. Absolutely, yeah. That is a, a huge statement and a huge task at hand, but um, we are standing with you and really celebrating you and your team as as we uh, go forth on this trial. Um, we're recording this in in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so. Um, having you on the podcast today, we would be remiss if we didn't give you some opportunity to talk to women and men really um, about what we should be doing to screen and prevent breast cancer and um, what we should do if we think we might have something going on that we need to get checked out. Yeah, so it's uh, Pink Month, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And um, so I always encourage as an individual, everyone know your family history. Um, if uh, if you aren't uh, clear on who in the family may have or may not have had some serious illness, including cancer, maybe at Thanksgiving, at Christmas dinner, at New Year's, this is a good year to ask. Um, because family history can influence your potential personal risk for cancer. And that influence 
influences when we recommend screening start, for instance, especially with breast cancer care. Uh, general population guidelines is at age 40, but we know one in seven women in Orange County get breast cancer. So there's a, a huge population out there who actually need screening at an earlier age if they have a family history. Um, so first thing is knowledge is power. And secondly, we hope that um, more individuals will be able to seek out screening care, especially here at the City of Hope Orange County, where we have the latest and greatest imaging technology um, to get plugged in, um, make sure that we catch cancer early. Cancer is very beatable. The earlier, the better. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sang. Um, what can women do to advocate for themselves? Say, I, I feel like I just hear so many patient stories, especially with women who have had a breast cancer journey. And there's oftentimes a piece of their story where they had to advocate for a little something more than what they were being offered by their perhaps their general practitioner or, you know, their health system. Um, why is it so important that women advocate for themselves and really listen to their body? Yeah. So um, it, oftentimes it's, uh, it's one of those uh, really uncomfortable times in your life where you're not sure how much to ask or not ask. Um, this is a foreign language to anyone who's not in medicine. Um, so I highly encourage the more questions, the better. Ask uh, the same question a couple different times until it makes sense to you or there's something that you're uncomfortable with. Make sure to clarify that issue too. Um, I'm a strong advocate for patients. I really feel that um, as a provider, hopefully I can make you as, mo as comfortable comfortable as I can with your care, really advance what we can do for you. Um, and in that sense, I think patients uh, feel free to call yourself for an appointment for a second opinion here at City of Hope Orange County, uh, first opinion, third opinion. Uh, we're happy to help even with a conversation for you to feel that you're doing right by you in your cancer care. And then the last follow up to that, um, I actually have an aunt who had breast cancer, she went and got the mammogram. They read the mammogram, said there was nothing there. She was convinced she had something. She knew she had something. Mm -hmm. So she pushed for further testing. And I believe that was an ultrasound and so forth. And then finally it was revealed. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what would you say to women like that who maybe feel like I've got one answer, but it's not quite sitting right. Or I feel like there is something. What else can they do if they really do feel like I, I want to go a little further than just the normal mammogram? And I've been told maybe I have dense, yeah. dense breast or whatever else. Yeah, so I think it's always uh, fair to ask your provider, your primary care provider, um, what should be the optimal screening for me at this point in my life with my symptoms, with my concerns too, and making sure that that's heard very well. Um, we know that um, our imaging is very good these days, but it's not perfect. So we very are much are reliant on a patient telling us what they may be feeling might be wrong. And we're happy to continue to check that out. And sometimes what we need to do is if we don't find anything, at least follow things in the short term to make sure nothing's evolving as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Last question around the trial. Um, how long will it be open and when do you expect to be able to start releasing results from the trial? Yeah, so we're taking care of patients here at City of Hope Orange County for this trial, and it should be open for the next two to three years. And so uh, for those who are interested, we highly encourage you to give us a call um, or send us an email or contact us to enroll as a patient, enroll, enroll and register as a patient if you aren't already, um, so that we can provide you the best information we can. Well, Dr. Singh, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for sharing about this important trial that you are um, investigating, and we wish you the best of luck with it. And I'm really excited to be a part of this right here in this point of time, if this really is the thing that will transform the way we deliver care to breast cancer patients in the future. Uh, what a tremendous opportunity. So thank you for joining us today. And thank you yeah. to all the rest of you for watching us and participating today in Talking Hope. We hope if you like the content that you'll share it, you'll subscribe, um, you'll maybe even leave us a great comment. Um, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on the next edition of Talking Hope. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC, or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lennar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. 
Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-HOPE. 